My dear friends in Christ, we have in today's gospel the account of two cures worked by our Lord immediately after the Sermon on the Mount. As it says, when our Lord came down from the mountain, then these two miracles took place. And if we examine them carefully, we see in these two cures lessons for how we should pray. So first, there is the leper. And what does he say to our Lord? If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. He had a great desire for this cure. We see the same thing in the centurion. This compassionate man who had a boy, a servant, who was lying grievously afflicted, as he said, paralyzed. And he came to our Lord from a distance and earnestly besought him to cure his servant. So this is the first quality that we should have in our prayers, and that is an ardent desire, an earnest desire to obtain what we ask. Oftentimes we pray, and we, we do want what we ask, but maybe it's not with the desire, the, the yearning, the earnestness that our Lord wants to see. He wants to see that we really want what we ask for. We earnestly desire it. So that's an important quality. The second quality that we see here is humility especially in the case of the centurion. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof. We must pray with a humble heart, with a deep conviction of our total dependence upon God and how much we need his help. We need his goodness, his mercy. So an ardent desire for what we ask and a deep humility, a, a recognition of our complete dependence upon God. And then thirdly, we need a great trust in our Lord, a belief that he can give us whatever we need if he wishes to do so. And very often we are lacking in this quality of prayer, this faith in our Lord, this trust in his power. So the words of the leper are interesting. He comes up to our Lord and said, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. In other words, I have complete and total trust that you are able to work this miracle. All you have to do is want to do it, to will it. You can do whatever you wish. So you have that complete and total trust in our Lord. Likewise, the centurion who came to our Lord from a distance and had that belief that our Lord could cure his servant. Now, is it not interesting? This man was not a member of the Hebrew people. He was a Roman, or at least part of the Roman army. He was an officer, had a great deal of responsibility. And he believed that all our Lord would have to do is to say, from a distance, be cured, and the servant would be cured. That our Lord simply had to will it, just like the leper said, if thou wilt. Because when he asked our Lord to cure his servant, our Lord said, I will come and cure him. He said, no, don't come. I don't want to trouble you. I have servants and soldiers under me, and I tell one, do this, and he does it, to another, go, and he goes. So I know that all you have to do is command from a distance, and it will be done. What great faith. In fact, this prayer of the centurion is so beautiful in its humility, its confidence, showing trust in our Lord, faith in him, that Holy Mother Church has adopted it before communion. We say it three times, Domine non sum dignus. We use the very words of the centurion. The only thing that the church changes is at the end of the prayer he says that my servant may be healed. And we say that my soul 
may be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. So a beautiful prayer. Here all of these centuries since that prayer has been said in every Catholic church whenever mass is offered the Domine non sum dignus three times because it it so clearly expresses the qualities that our prayers should have. So let us examine ourselves today as we reflect upon this gospel and the story of these two wonderful miracles to ask ourselves, do I have those three qualities when I pray? Do I have, first of all, an earnest desire for the petitions that I am asking, for the results of my prayer that I am asking? Do I really want it? Number two, do I have the deep humility that is based upon an understanding, a conviction that I am completely dependent upon God? I can do nothing good of myself. I'm entirely dependent on his mercy and his grace. And number three, do I have a total trust in our Lord? Or do I pray, well, I'm going to ask for this, but I probably won't get it. Do we have that kind of attitude? Or do we have a total, complete trust in our Lord, in his goodness, a belief in his power to grant whatever we need, and his willingness to help us? So that's trust, confidence in our Lord. These three qualities make our prayers infallibly heard if we have them. And we have them earnestly. That, that earnest desire, that deep humility, and that complete and total trust in our Lord. Let us make certain that our prayers have these qualities, and then surely they will be heard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.